Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. session of the 2019 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are happy to introduce the Creativity Panel. Our speakers today are Maria Korolov, Bryce Johannes, Kizma Reidling, and Reiner Schneeberger. I'll briefly introduce our panel speakers today, and please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of the session, and the full schedule of events. Maria Korolov is a published author and covers artificial intelligence for CIO Magazine and cybersecurity for CSO Online. She's also the editor of Hypergrid Business since 2009. Bryce Johannes, known in world as Han Boshi, is the media manager at Nuna Art Gallery, a software developer at Xero Solutions, and author of When People Unite. Kizma, aka Juliet Surreal Dreaming, is the co creator of One Biennial and organizes the Hypergrid Hoppers, an event somewhat similar to HG Safari. And Reiner Schneeberger, in world as Art Blue, is the creator of Art Blue and controlled by an AI owl made by Tyrell Wayland. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have any questions or comments during the session, you may send your tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC. 19. Welcome everyone and let's begin the session. Well, thank you Scott for introducing us. Um, I really appreciate it. The having uh, being here at this conference and the fact that you guys are all have us here to talk about art and what we're going to do is the, the three artists here on this panel are going to introduce themselves and talk a little bit about what they see uh, as the most important aspect of what it means to be an artist and creator in OpenSim. And I'm um, hoping we can start with Bryce, uh, also known as Han Boshi um, in, in World, because uh, he was introduced first, and that's a good random place to start. Random is good. Uh, Han Boshi is the pronunciation. It's, Sorry. Uh, it's all right. It's, it's, it's Chinese. Um, I'm oh, part yeah. of <laughs> yeah, I'm part of a project. Uh, the Nuna Art Gallery is a, it's a virtual art gallery. It's opening tomorrow, in fact, uh, on the Third Rock Grid. So it's something worth checking out. Uh, that's my background in terms of uh, where I'm coming from, from the creativity perspective. I think when we talk about creativity and what's important, I think it's important to break it down into, the, into a few different aspects of creativity. Uh, starting with, just really quickly, um, where a lot of people come into uh, virtual reality creativity and creation is just experimentation. And, and I think the open sim environment is important there because compared to established grids, there's a low cost of entry. Uh, and the in-world tools certainly make it easier to get into that. When you become more expert at design, uh, you get and you either go down the commercialization track or the art track, uh, more of a public representation of creativity. And I think there's an, an enormous opportunity for OpenSim here to serve as curator of that kind of uh, art and creativity for the good of society, but also for the understanding of what virtual reality can do. Uh, as part of that, it's important aspect of creativity is the ability to be able to share and find that content. So creation is important. And lastly, um, creative in terms of problem solving, creative problem solving. What problems can virtual reality solve? And that's a, as creative as the art aspect. Where and how and what role can virtual reality have in our society to bring us together? And open sim again is huge here in the sense that um, the, we talk about something like Second Life. They've got their narrow, their pretty narrowed uh, niche. Where open sim can be just about anything we want, and there's a lot of room for for creative experimentation on new ways of using the platform. All right, so that's that's my take. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for sharing that. Um, and um, you've hit my ideas of how I feel about creativity in OpenSim spot on. Kisma, uh, would you like to introduce yourself and explain what you think that OpenSim means for creativity? Thank you, Maria. Um, yeah, sure. I, um, 
have been involved with uh, art communities digitally, not just Open Sims, but of course, Second Life. So I'm going to uh, bridge both of those. And in real life, I'm an artist. So um, getting involved in a digital way or a virtual way with my art um, has been quite exciting. I agree with Han. I agree with you that um, the reason why we come into Open Sims um, to uh, a build and create our art is because it's the sky is truly really the limit. We have the ability to explore and experiment uh, without that cost heavy um, uh, factor hanging over our heads like we do in um, places like Second Life. And we can just go crazy uh, in our explorations of art and we aren't limited to just 2D art. We come in and we begin to explore the 3D aspect of it and then of course marry together 2D and 3D in uh, very immersive ways. And I think that um, a lot of artists yet, uh, an art a lot of artists have not yet understood the true freedom um, we have in open sims for our creative um, artistic expression. Uh, I, I um, own the Surreal Art Gallery in Second Life, and we are bringing that to our HG Hoppers um, server uh, sim in Craft World, and uh, that will be opening in January 2020. So we're looking forward to that. And then, of course, um, Art Blue and I work on many, many art projects that uh, merge together the different virtual uh, open sim worlds and um, we bring it into real life. So we're sort of, we consider ourselves to be multi-dimensional because we truly are in many different platforms in virtual worlds and then we're in real life as well. So I don't see a distinction between virtual worlds and real worlds when it comes to art. I believe that they really do um, uh, move back and forth and um, that's sort of why I'm here today. <laughs> so thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, and uh, now I would like to ask Art Blue uh, to talk about his experiences with what OpenSim means for art and creativity. Yeah, thank you, Maria. Thank you, Scott, for the nice introduction. Uh, Scott said, I'm controlled by an AI, an owl that might be right. Uh, the owl must hide under my big head, maybe in the fridge. I don't know. At least I have a good excuse for making mistakes and bringing things not uh, as good to the audience as I would like it. But creativity, uh, how to get the thing fixed? What does it mean? That was the introduction, the question. And I thought about this, how to explain it. I'm now 62 years. About three years ago, I wrote my memoirs. I was thinking, when did I start to become creative? So I put the following story in my book. When I was in third class at elementary school, so about at the age of eight, I faked the signature of my mother for having been absent at school. I declared myself <laughs> ill. I had not the foresight that the teacher will see that I was writing that it was the writing of an eight-year-old boy faking his mother's <laughs> name. Later, I got smart and to let computers fake what I like to be seen as truth. I went to random art to use control stochastics, creating abstract art like grass in the wind, which have been just lines plotted on a paper with slightly different angles and uh, lengths sticking out from the base. Let's call this baseline the earth. <laughs> now I focus in my art uh, more on ideas of personality capture and emulation. Can the human brain be simulated to produce art that varies when you see it, so each spectator sees it different? We know it can be done. Years ago, it would have been impossible. We are in a simulated world. We have an avatar sitting here. Some got today a hat with a fridge to wear on the head. So uh, let's, see who, let's see who listens uh, carefully and wears the fridge within the next minute. <laughs> For them, I have a gift. Why I say this all? Uh, why I reach into the past? Because I got to know that others before me had similar ideas. Even art in a fridge is very common and to place a fridge on a hat as well. I'm sure many remember art on hats in Second Life. 
basically everything was placed on one's head in these festivals. They have been great. So question is, what is transformative art? What is plain copy? I know, Maria, you figured this question out in your survey. Maybe we'll come back later on this. <laughs> Well, well, thank you for that, for that, uh, for the, those thoughts. Um, I would also like to say a couple of words about creativity. Um, I've been a nonfiction journalist for most of my life. Oh, a nonfiction. <laughs> I try. Um, <laughs> uh, but the, earlier this year, I uh, I started writing. Now, the reason I first came into the virtual world was because of the idea that everyone here has mentioned that you can create things from scratch that are absolutely amazing. You can build an entire world around yourself and share it with other people. And to me, that was just this most awesome thought ever. And um, I, I really fell in love with it. And I couldn't get enough of what it was like to create something like this. And uh, starting this year, I become, started writing fiction based in virtual worlds trying to kind of get a handle on this idea that uh, virtual reality isn't about just playing a game or just playing a character or, or, or looking at something in 3D. Virtual reality is about uh, giving, expanding the possibilities that you have to create, to create everything, to create your life, to create your relationships, to create, um, ideas and, and movements and, um, and businesses and, and whatever you wanna create beyond geographical and physical boundaries that we're stuck with in our daily life. And this is something that I'm trying to express um, through my fiction writing and that I've kind of been trying to get to through hypergrid business as well. And for me, Open Sim right now is kind of the leading edge of that because the creativity that it makes possible through this super low cost, flexible platform that is almost easy enough for anyone to use uh, has just been amazing and has really brought a lot of joy to my life for the past uh, 10 years. And I'm hoping that um, our audience feels the same and that that's why they're here. Um, so uh, we have a, a few questions that I would like to um, ask you guys. And the first one is, we're looking back at a decade in OpenSim right now, or at least I'm looking back at a decade in OpenSim because that's how long I've been here. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, you can talk about how you've seen OpenSim change over this past 10 years in terms of the creativity and the art that you see here, whether it's community, the technology, or or other things that you're seeing as having changed while you've been here. And is there anybody who would like to take that on first? Okay, I will. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. <laughs> um, I've only been in Open Sims uh, since about 2015, and I came in specifically for the art uh, creativity aspect. Um, so I don't have that decade of experience you're wanting us to look at. However, in just the four years that I have been creating in Open Sims, I can say I have noticed a change, a definite change. Of course, uh, Mesh has come in much more prevalently into Open Sims, but also scripting seems to have gotten better and working with textures and prims uh, has become a little easier. Uh, avatars have definitely gotten way better and today are comparable to those uh, you might wear in, in uh, technology sims like Second Life. Um, you can see I'm donning one of those. I'm your, I'm your uh, what do you call it? Your uh, bada boom girl um, for, uh, for OSCC. But if you were to meet me on Craft World, you'd see this little crazy weird thing running around. So we have that ability to really uh, live our fantasy and our creativity also as avatars. Um, I, I do feel all in all that each year we are seeing greater diversity and better technology here in Open Sims. And the only thing that I feel is truly lacking is a real cohesive community. Um, we 
you know, we do have one in places like Second Life, and I'm, I'm sorry to keep bringing up Second Life, but we all know that's sort of a prototype for Open Sims also. But I do trust that we will continue to evolve. Open Sims will continue to evolve, uh, to evolve. I mean, after all, look at how much easier it has gotten for us to hypergrid hop. That right there is uh, an example of how far we are moving in leaps and bounds. So. I think uh, there has been a drastic change. If I may just just build on top of that a little bit, uh, I think in the in the early days of OpenSim, I think there was a greater emphasis on quantity over quality, just to make sure that there was a broad selection of different uh, objects and clothing uh, created and available to people who are joining these communities. And so there was a there was a rush, a lot of good. I mean, there was a lot of good work, but it was it was qu quantity over quality, and that has and for for a lot of the early years, set the standard for and the expectation for what open sim looked like, and with particularly with tools with mesh becoming more common, but Blender getting um, used much more often, you're seeing now uh, a transition where quality is starting to make a, a greater imp impression upon people yep. uh, in OpenSim. Do you think that's true, um, everyone else? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because um, we're seeing it. Just go to some of the in incredible servers. Um, they have their themed landscapes, and they're gorgeous. They're absolutely gorgeous. Whereas in the beginning, when I would hop around, it was just little basic prim box buildings. Do you know what I'm saying? And uh, so, yeah, I think uh, we're really seeing an evolution uh, taking place uh, away from quantity into some serious quality. I guess I have to say that I agree with you in terms of even the, the basics, like the welcome areas of grids. Um, it used to be a lot of like default starter regions that that were almost blank or had a couple of default freebie stores in there. And now they're becoming really, 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 really welcoming works of art in themselves that grid owners have put a lot of time and effort into, or their community to put a lot of time and effort into. And it's just a joy to travel around and, and, and see them. Yeah, it's a matter of first impressions, right? That old saying. Yeah. Uh, you, you've got to make that first impression that this this is serious, this is serious virtual reality. This is not, uh, I mean, you, there, there, are, there are sandboxes for people to get into it, but uh, virtual reality open sim is, is a serious player. And uh, we're also seeing some uh, multi-grid festivals because I've been writing about them where people come from all over OpenSim to participate in festivals on individual grids. Um, Craft has had uh, quite a few um, uh, uh, recently and um, and uh, the, the art events that are happening, like, uh, like the Numa Gallery opening that's coming up um, are shared with the entire OpenSim community because we have the hypergrid, because people can teleport in and share it with their friends. And um, I'm, I really enjoy seeing that. Yeah. Um, our next question is, what do you wanna see happen next? So we can talk about the technology, we can talk about the community. I personally would like to see better event sharing so people can find out what's happening everywhere else. And with Google Plus um, having gone the way of the dodo, um, we've lost some of the really vibrant communities we had for hypergrid travelers, like OpenSim Virtual and hypergrid travelers. No, oh, is it hypergrid safari? Um, and, uh, and some of them have moved over to Facebook, but nowhere near the scale that we had before. And MeWe and Discord are closed platforms that are hard to use to reach out to the general public who aren't already members of those communities. Um, so um, I love seeing OpenSim World stepping up with, with their event directory. And it's now easier to follow and easier to share those events in world and online. 
Um, and I would like to see more of that. Yeah, I think I think my ideas on this overlap a lot of what you're saying. It's more for me. It's largely about just better curation of the really best content that OpenSim has to offer. And I think I think the two hard professional artists in our in our panel here are going to be particularly keen on this. But how do how do we make sure that the best content, the the really strong art content that's being created? is available and and accessible and and people know how to get to uh in in the hypergrid uh just how do you how do you get that up to people and how yeah. people find where it is yeah see that is i think that's one of the uh, main uh, challenges um and i know we're going to look at that question a little bit later but i think that's one of the main uh, challenges is uh how to get information out there to people. I don't use Discord, you know, I'm one of those freaks that don't use it. I don't like it um, because it's just one more social media function and I can't handle <clears throat> all the social media functions. Um, so when I look at um, what we're dealing with now and, and uh, you know, what I would love to see happen, it's the same thing as both what both of you are saying, the unification between our communities um, um, and enable uh, enabling that cross communic ah, I don't know I don't know the proper words for it but you know what I'm saying making one I don't know if it's a hub that we need which how do we do that how do we create a hub or one location where all the information can be found especially here in open sims you know we look at places like um, we look at places like Second Life. They have that, you know, it's it's a it's a closed environment, right? So every single member logs on and they can go into the data bank and they can search all the different activities that are going on grid wide. That we don't we do not have here in OpenSims because there are so many uh, servers and there are servers we don't even know about that we will probably never know about that are awesome servers. And, and we don't get the information about them. So that to me is one of the biggest challenges. How do we bring us all together? How do we get out there? Oh my God, we've got some incredible artistic uh, uh, installations here that would blow your mind. Come and see it. How do you get that out, out to everybody? You know, that's, uh, Han, that's, that's the biggest one, I think, right there. Um, one of the things that um, artists should talk to their grid owners about uh, is something that Fred Beckerson is working on. He's the guy behind Outworlds and Dream Grid, and he's working on a hypergrid search function oh, that great. will be automatically part of the Dream Grid installer, which is like an easy installer. Anyone can set up an open some server uh, on a home computer, um, but also is available to other grids as well. Now, this is very much in development. So I think that this is something that content creators and event organizers may want to check out and weigh in on so that we don't have like a million things called primitive showing up in the search, making it useless. Um, but is but but that's like organized in a way that's valuable to users. And, and the other thing is, as a journalist, um, I always think of journalism as, as the answer to, you know, all the world's problems, of course. Um, but in this case, having an art journal or even an art journalist or an art blogger, uh, somebody who goes around and finds the community. Artists often are loath to talk about themselves. They wanna sit there and do their art and if people come see it, well, people will come see it. They will find it somehow. Well, no, they don't find it. <laughs> uh, you have to people about it. <laughs> and uh, somebody who's like really passionate about art and who, develops that um, the, the sources in the community and finds out what's going on and then becomes a place where people can send tips to them to tip them off about things going on and they could come and take pictures and, and sh showcase that to everybody would be a really, really wonderful thing. And I'm not the person to do it. I don't have a background in art and I, I'm covering like, like everything else that's happening in Open Sam on top of a day job. I can't take on this project. But if anybody out there in the audience is watching this 
or is watching it on replay, you know, years later, um, and you want to do this, it's a, it's a great way to learn about virtual art and digital art and really meet the people who are going to be building the art of the future. Awesome. So if you care about art, this is one place you can go to meet artists and find out what's going on and share it with the world. And uh, if you do it on a blog or on a website, um, I'll promote it on Hypergrid Business. I'll, I'll run your articles or I'll run, run links to it or tweet it out. And then, of course, there's social media and other places you can go to, to have to develop an audience for that kind of writing as well. Um, and um, Art Blue, um, um, uh, uh, Han, uh, do you guys have any ideas about what um, what you would like to see happen in OpenSIM? Oh yeah, now you're asking me, and you know, if I'm asked, I cannot stop to talk. So uh, <laughs> you're in big trouble now. <laughs> yeah, what to add on all the nice words I have heard now? Um, I think one point uh, can be added. Uh, OpenSim allows more than other platforms. You can go beyond the borders. You can put hundred thousand blades of grass, just to take an example, uh, onto the ground or in the air, which you never could do elsewhere else or somewhere else, and let visitors come and speak about your grass installation. <laughs> I remember a work by Freebie Ling. She was the first to read more prims as it was allowed in Second Life. She made a world record. She was so happy. Um, Guinness Book of Records, um, uh, an artist who uh, went beyond the borders of Prims. And we have NPCs in OpenSim running, which is um, a great thing if you are creative in using them. So uh, the borders are limitless. Uh, it's open source. You can, uh, if you are, are a coder, can add a lot of additional things. You can make it known. I think this should, we should add that how can we make OpenSim more own, uh, more known. Um, the Google uh, Cardboard, which we introduced today, has 15 million installations, 15 million. And it costs five to ten dollars, so it can be even folded uh, as flat as a smartphone is. And when I go to a museum, a director or some who is in the classical art, and I show this, then it's like a child eating first time ice cream. Uh, they cannot believe. Oh, that's immersive art. That's digital art. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. Oh, I, I didn't think so. As when the chair turns and the head goes up and down. Uh, you see, oh, aha, uh -huh. and now you have a book about this. Mm -hmm. Now I understand it. Yeah, so it comes uh, by seeing, by doing, and it's difficult. That's very difficult to bring a manager or a kid or a user, a simple user, to open them because there are so many functions. The menu in Firestorm. Avoid to click there. Don't click there. Be aware <laughs> that only here you can click, and else you have a problem. So the so fewer is a problem for starters. It's not like Windows. It's not that you say, "Oh, I know it from Office." Yeah, you have to learn it fresh. So you have to clear your mind. You have to empty it first, and then you can start with this fewer. So you need passion. And a normal user who just wants to see something has not passion. It's just, okay, I try it, and then it has to be fun. So uh, I think that is a point we have to um, give more thoughts about the fewer development. We always speak about OpenSIM, but we need something to be inside this data. And um, this has to fit to people, yeah, not to us, because we know it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I stop. I think it's it's enough <laughs> from my side. I'm with, totally with you on the viewer issue. I think Philip Rosedale said that using an open sim viewer is a little, or using a second life viewer, same thing, is a little like playing a piano because you've got your two hands doing two totally different things. Like so, your left hand is pushing one set of buttons, and your right hand is pushing another set of buttons in order to do like even the most basic things. And I know whenever I switch keyboards. I am unable to move around or look look at anything for like a few minutes until like my hands adjust to to the new controls. <laughs> and after that, that's after being here for ten years. So, <laughs> um, 
and and uh, so on a related note, um, so what about the future of digital or virtual art in uh, general? Um, so so beyond the you know specific open sin things, uh, where do you think that um, virtual art itself is going to go? Are we going to see things like 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 immersive experiences that are richer, more detailed, longer, narrative based, more more like like uh, like living a, a slice of life as opposed to looking at one thing, something that that virtual reality or virtual worlds makes possible that you can't do in traditional art. Do you see that as as something that we see more of uh, in world? Oh, oh, yeah, I have a real dream with that, Maria. I, I, I dream of entire sims that are just one huge immersive landscape where you're walking into the entire uh, uh, creative center of someone's mind. And it's not just walking around a landscape and there's a, there's a point of interest over here that's some art or there's a point of interest over there with some art, but the whole entire thing surrounding you, embracing you is art. And, um, you know, I mean, I guess we kind of did that, uh, art, art, art Blue, and I kind of did that with the one Biennale we did in 2018 because we had eight servers, I think it was art, joined together and each one of them was an immersive art environment environment and so you went from you went in a circle and then came into the center and it was just this immersive uh, art experience but I see that I, I would love to see that um, continue and and the other thing and then I'll, I'll close my mouth because I know I talk a lot too is I, I would love to see um, I honestly would love to see some of those art servers become VR experiences. I am I am pro VR. Um, I know that we just went through a, a presentation that was really anti VR, but I think we have to open our minds and realize that here in Open Sims, if we hold open minds and experiment and explore, we're the ones that can bring forth. Uh, an entire new generation of experience, digital, virtual experience for people. So I, I would like to see that happen. I'd like to see a VR, um, an entire VR server, art server, um, not just the faked VR project that, that uh, we just completed, which is phenomenal, but an entire server. So... <laughs> Okay, Juliet, if I may add something very <laughs> short uh, about this discussion, uh, VR and um, first person view and you are alone, it's not a social environment. That is true if you look on the cardboard or on a, on a, on a headset of Oculus or so mostly, but there are applications or let's say um, institutions or locations uh, combining this technology to a new way of uh, social interaction. And I oh, have yeah. one example, that's the Imaginarium or Engineerium, I've maybe I've uh, mistyped it. And the other is a video, it's called Singularity, it's a shooter thing. So I have two extremes here. The first is just an artistic experience uh, where you walk in a sort of artistic um, Minecraft world. Uh, with others, and the other is a group shooter experience where you fight yeah. for life or for points. And um, they expand. This company behind has now locations all over the world, and they are fully outbooked, so it runs. And this is a point uh, that brings me to uh, a product that was once existing. It's called Lively. I'm not sure if anyone remembers lively from Google, uh, they tried it uh, to make a sort of mass um, avatar land or whatever, and then they stopped because it was not commercially successful. Uh, but if one of the big players steps again into this market, avatar-based, avatar 
avatar-driven environments, then things will change. Then we will not discuss, is it something? It's just a question how to use it. So uh, we have to wait on such a player who takes it over. And it's then um, and then um, we will see how it goes. Uh, I, I share the thoughts in some ways that uh, VR headsets are now not a, a, a way we can uh, go on as artists because you will be alone there. You just see uh, your artistic uh, work um, or maybe um, uh, you can share it with, with someone in range, uh, in, a, in a wireless LAN around you. So it's not enough to, to have it uh, similar to an open sim environment. Okay. Just to, yeah, just to expand a little bit on some of the, the points there. I think, well, anything that anything that in terms of what we the stuff that we're talking about are big ambitious projects, right? Yeah, um, right. They, yeah. That and and that the attempts that have been done have not been quote commercially viable. But there, so what we need to do is have. I, I don't know the the ambition to take these on, despite the fact that there is no commercial model for them. Uh, you take uh, the, the project I'm very familiar with is the Nuna Art Gallery, the virtual art gallery. This is five floors of of real world art, you know, from from Mark uh, Michelangelo to Bansky. Uh, th where you can walk around, you look at the art. There's a there's a virtual guide who will walk you through the art and talk to you about it. Uh, Non-player characters, uh, all done nonprofit. All this stuff, it's hyper grid access. So uh, you, you just it's just available. You can take what you want. Um, there's there's no model there <laughs> to make money from it, but it it. It expands a purpose, two purposes. Mainly, it it, it demonstrates the potential of virtual reality, and two, uh, it teaches art for people who might not have access to it. Educational. So, yeah. So, um, I want to. Uh, somebody in the comments pointed out the dreams, the Dreamgate viewer, uh, Seamgate viewer, uh, which is a, s a slimmed down viewer that the idea is to get people in easily to, to attend events. Um, so I wanted to give a shout out to them. Um, I think I ran one of their press releases uh, a few days ago. Um, and um, I also wanted to add that uh, you guys are creating a new visual experiential language here in OpenSIM, a language that will be the foundation of whatever will happen in virtual reality later on, because the components that we have here in Open Salmon and Second Life are the fundamentals are directly transferable to a virtual reality environment. So, which, which is one of the things that I find so exciting about uh, Open Sim is that a new language is being written in front of us, a visual, architectural, and experiential language. Of, of symbols and experiences and how things interact with one another um, that will eventually turn into the way the world lives. Mm -hmm. So I'm like really excited um, to see that happening. Um, and uh, so my last question, because we're um, getting close um, to the end, is what do you think are the biggest challenges uh, facing art and creativity in OpenSIM? And we've already talked about the communication issue. Um, uh, do you have any other things that you see as as needing to be addressed? And maybe um, uh, people can, you know, once we bring them up, that people can start thinking about some solutions. Uh, you know, I, I the one uh, challenge I see and. Um, and art, uh, feel free to uh, like say, oh yeah, or no, <laughs> um, because he and I work so hand in hand with, with art projects. But, you know, there's so many incredible people in this world, I mean, in the world, and more and more are becoming aware of digital, virtual realities um, as a venue for their art. 
Um, and and we see, like Han, you even brought up that uh, in Second Life, there's a lot of artists there, and it's sort of a little niched, you know. Um, they've they've they put themselves into a corner just a little bit, but it's only because of limitations. And so Art and I have been working so hard to expose those people to open sims, to broaden them, to widen them. And there's such fear, there's such fear in a lot of those uh, people, those artists, in coming into open sims. And I, I, I think it's because, and I, I might be totally off on this one, but I think it's because they feel nobody will ever see their creations and they're doing it all for nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, as artists, we, we paint, we create not for anybody else. It's for ourselves. It's soul expression. We do it because we have to, it's inside of us and we have to get it out. We, we, it's just life. It's like talking, you know? Um, but a lot of people, they need their art to be seen. They need it to be validated by other people to know for their own self-confidence. And an artist and virtual are no different, no different. Um, so that's one of the biggest challenges that I think we face on a regular basis is uh, getting people to feel comfortable to come in to open Sims to, to use it creatively. So... They feel mm -hmm. like they're uh, betraying <laughs> or cheating on Second Life, Linden Labs or something. I don't know. I don't get it. I, I don't get that one. So, yeah. Yeah, Juliet, uh, you, have this, you have said it well. Um, one point I want to express in addition, it's called user creativity. Uh, all these terms mean user. It's not a gaming business we run here uh, for profit, like Fortnite or League of Legends or whatever it is. Uh, it's not made by a studio for uh, selling the product. It is by a community. So very important is that we strengthen the community ideas. Um, even knowing that it is so easy to run your home server and a lot of people separate out of OpenSim, out of OS Grid, out of Metro, out of every grid that uh, is known and say, oh, now I open my own server and come to me. And uh, so you have a lot of scattered development and uh, just you get it by chance, by, by a mistake more or less, that someone has opened something and this we have to in a way stop that everyone says oh there are no people in open sim yeah because you don't meet it on the place a you don't meet it on the place b but you may meet them on place z yeah so you have to find them they are everywhere but nowhere really and this is a, a problem for communication that open sim is a growing and interesting place mm. The last, uh, I have, well, we're getting close to the end. So I have a, a last question to ask you guys. And that's about the transformative nature of immersive art. Um, occasion, I've come across this idea when writing about um, uh, virtual art that immersive experiences have the potential to be much more moving, connect more emotionally with the viewer or the person experiencing it than, uh, than other um, uh, uh, traditional art forms um, that uh, they can really transport you somewhere else and, and change you. Um, and do you see that? Do you, do you see that happening? right now in open sim with immersive art do you see that as the potential for immersive art in the future to be a really transformative and moving kind of artistic medium i see it on january 7th we have our next <laughs> hopper trip and we go exactly uh to a place where this happens mm -hmm. 
Well, tell us more. What <laughs> does it transform you into? Uh, no. Just I'm another world. <laughs> I've got my fingers crossed. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, January 7 at 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific Daytime. Meeting at Craft World HG Hoppers. Uh, we had, I, I tell you why. We always have posted where we want to go. And then people go there, but they don't come to the Hoppers event. They say, oh, I saw it already. Two days ago, I was there. I saw it. It's great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's not a community building. No. If we always say where we go and people sneak in and post <laughs> photos then that they have been there, and then we stand here with three or four friends who always come, oh no, that cannot be the, the way of forming um, a, a living community. So we, we keep it now a little bit more secret where we will go. That's so much fun. That sounds like so much fun. So it's a mystery destination for hypergrid yes. hoppers on January 7th. That sounds like a fun thing to do if you're interested in immersive art. Can you give me give us a little taste of what people will see? Yeah, Juliette, maybe well, you. Well, you're going to see original art, so it's not a it's not somebody that's considered a tradition. Oh, sorry about that. I accidentally got <laughs> dropped from the call. Can you all hear me? Oh my God, I thought it was me. I thought I was dropped from the call. And I was like trying to figure out which button to push on my Skype. <laughs> yeah, no, it was me. I, I, I guess I talked too much. Okay, who's revolting against me in that in, in the call? <laughs> oh, um, you are about to tell us something mysterious about this new destination, which is original art. Oh right, it's a it's 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 a current living artist, and um, we don't want to say the person's name, and we don't want to go in too much about it, um, other than the fact that they have taken their artwork, and they have uh, created they they take us into their artwork. Every single piece of art that they're showing us, they're taking us into their art and um, that's pretty phenomenal so um, I have we've been in immersive art before but this is actually going into their work so I, I uh, and and it's a new it's a new artist it's somebody I wasn't familiar with and I'm really really excited to share it with everybody so HG hoppers am I still here HG yeah. hoppers <laughs> on the seventh our first 2020 um, hop. Uh, one o'clock, come to our HG Hoppers at Craft World Grid. So <laughs> that's the mystery. <laughs> All right. And we are getting close to our end time. Does anybody have any last words before we go? Uh, thank you so much, Maria, for doing this and for um, allowing us to share about uh, art and creativity in uh, virtual worlds. So thank you. Well, oh, I just think it's, it's a really unique aspect of being an open sim as the platform that it really allows such unbounded creativity and the ability to share it with people from all over the world at such a low cost with both easy to use tools and professional tools and the whole spectrum of of things that you can use for for the um for, for making your projects from like trims all the way up to really difficult immersive scripting and you can see all of it in open sim and um it's just amazing and i've had a great time writing about it and i'm looking forward to to seeing a lot more of it coming up Thank you so much. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, your work has been amazing. And um, I think the entire OpenSim community and the whole immersive art community 
benefits from what you're doing here. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ark. Thank you, Hans. And um, thank you. Um, oh my God, uh, Kizma. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, Maria. <laughs> I couldn't remember what, what, what was your real name. <laughs> I just say, kiss me, kiss my. <laughs> Oh, just just so people know, I thought she was two different people. <laughs> I know. I was like, I was supposed to be there in, in two avatars. Oh no. <laughs> I had her listed twice with two different bios when I first set up this panel. <laughs> I love Thank it. Thank you very much, Maria and panelists. That was a terrific presentation and very inspiring. Thank you again. Thank you. Now, Thank as you for having us. As a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. Following this session, the next session will begin at 4.30 p.m. in this keynote region, and it's entitled A Graduate School Residency in Virtual Reality, presented by yours truly. We also encourage you to visit the OSCC 19 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find any accompanying information on the presentations and explore the hypergrid tour resources in OSCC Expo 2 region, along with sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo region. <laughs>